listening to the 300s podcast. Hello guys, welcome back to episode 2 of the 300s podcast here with Red Kyle and Rick. What's going on guys? Hello, hello. Good to be with you again. So I know we got a few things we want to talk about today. I think the first thing, we'll just jump right into it, was the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot results. If you guys got in, if you guys didn't get in, if you guys, you got screwed. Uh, I know, Rick, that was your first post uh, on the website recently. What are your thoughts on it, Rick? What do you think? I think Yvonne Rodriguez was a consensus pick. I know he only got 76%, so he just barely cleared that hurdle to get in. I think he got 336 votes for his spare, but I think that's somebody that most guys can agree on. How come Pudge Probably the best catcher of his era, 90s and 2000s. How come he didn't get uh, his balls busted for being a potential steroid guy? I feel like the writers, <clears throat> the writers I, asked him the other day, they said, oh, did you do steroids? And he said no, and they all were like, all right, never mind. They must have changed the rules. No, I don't know. I think if Rodriguez just has the benefit of coming a little bit later along in the game, Mike Piazza got in a couple of years ago despite the suspicions around him, including back knee, of all things. But Yvonne Rodriguez, you know, if the suspicions are the same, he was a better player. And in addition to his offense, he had a cannon behind the plate. He was a great defensive player. I don't know, the steroid question, it certainly helps out Jeff Bagwell. Also, he got in in his seventh year of eligibility. He got 86.2% of the votes, so he had quite a few votes to spare. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know. It, it is strange how this goes because the way it looks now is not as many first ballot guys get in, but you get on the ballot at 40% and you creep up and up and up. I don't know. I think Hall of Famers should be more clear cut. You know, Tim Raines, you know, I talked about in the first post I had on the 300s. Tim Raines wouldn't have been on my ballot. Um, you know, he was a good player. Was he great? I don't know. He was a little bit before my time, but I remember looking at his numbers. They seemed pretty average in the second half. Wasn't Bagwell like 5'9", 220? Uh, if you want to talk about a steroids guy, I think he's probably someone you should start with. And, and Tim Raines, I, I think the only reason he got in was because of Twitter. Like, obviously, he was before you know, our time, but I don't know shit about him. And from his numbers, he looks pretty okay. So I wouldn't have voted for him. I think he got the baseball writer's 15th year in the ballot sympathy vote. Well, that's what I don't like about the ballot these days. You have these cause celebs, and that's how guys get in. Burt Blylevin a couple of years ago, Jim Rice before that. Um, You know, my gripe with the balloting is not much different than other guys' gripes with the balloting. You know, if you're going to be a Hall of Famer, it shouldn't take you 14 years to get in. And so that is nice that now you've only got 10 years on the ballot. So somebody like Lee Smith was grandfathered in. He falls off the ballot this year after 15 appearances. But for Tim Raines, this would have been his last appearance, and with the 10th time on the ballot. And again, I just think, if you're a Hall of Famer, we should know sooner than 15 years after you retire. Somebody like David Ortiz, Ken Griffey Jr., Tom Rivera, those guys you know are Hall of Famers when they step off the field the final time. Tim yeah. Raines, Jeff Bagwell, I don't know. Well, and Tony Nazarotti had a good point earlier in the week. There have been about 19,000 players in Major League Baseball history. 220 are in the Hall of Fame, so that's about 1%. And it certainly feels like now we're starting to open floodgate because right behind the three that got in, we have Trevor Hoffman, Vladimir Guerrero, Edgar Martinez, Clemens and Bonds picking up steam. So I think it's very likely in the next couple of years we could see three, four, five guys get in a year for the next couple of years or decade. Well, somebody like um, Carlos Delgado, did you see he completely fell off the ballot? with pretty comparable numbers to David Ortiz when he was healthy, but just didn't have the postseason stats to back it up. Yeah, I mean, that's what's going to happen. Ortiz, I think his, his numbers themselves are borderline, but you know, being one of the greatest postseason clutch hitters of all time is going to be something that pushes him over, I would think. And then especially just him being so you know, friendly and available to the media, well, guess who's voting on who's going to make the Hall of Fame? It's the media. So you, you get a guy like David Ortiz, like, oh, he's definitely in. And you look at his numbers, like, yeah, maybe, but if Delgado's close, it's like, I don't know shit about Delgado. I just remember him being on the Mets, and I remember him having a minor league tryout with the Red Sox and not making it past Pawtucket. So, not not exactly glowing memories for me. Well, you know, it, it, that's the Mets thing. It's, let's get these players after their prime and then just watch them just tank on our team. <laughs> <laughs> like Jason Bay and oh. well, Delgado. Um, 
Who was that? Move on. Mo- John Mo- Allison. A lot of old Red Sox guys wash up four hours south. I was going to say, move on, that fat fuck. Pedro. Pe- well, Pedro was pretty good the first year he was on the Mets. And then he got hurt. And then he got hurt, and then, you know, that was it. <clears throat> but, yeah, so guys that didn't get in. I know. Well, let's talk about the media about the media and I think you're right to a degree now I don't know if I would have used the same words that Kurt Schilling used when he ripped the scumbag press but hey if you hold the ballot it's going to get to your head and if one guy is confrontational and the other is always available it's just human nature well that's where the writers bust out the character clause bullshit or whatever it's it's called you know if they don't think you're a good guy they won't put you in even though it has nothing to really do with how good you are at baseball Obviously, Schilling seems to be someone who's kind of suffering from that. <clears throat> and then you got all the guys that are maybe, possibly, probably did steroids. Obviously, Bonds and Clemens and you know everyone in that that entire era. But my feeling is, if you know if you're gonna vote one guy and you have to vote them all in, especially they voted in Bud Selig. Yeah. Bud Selig was the guy who started it all. He turned a blind eye and he encouraged that shit. And I think he's in it. And the managers in that era. What's that? If you're going to vote in the commissioner of that era and the managers, um, you know, if management can't get in, why can't the employees? They were a part of it all the way. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's certain guys are getting screwed. I think uh, the guy who got screwed the most, Tim Wakefield, he only got one vote. One uh, vote for Tim. One, one. vote. He's like, he's like the Nomar of the ballot. I think Nomar was, you know, hitting at like 5% for a couple of years until he fell off. He had, you know, hey, at the least greatest Tim Wakefield wasn't ever. Pat Burrell or Freddie Sanchez. Zero votes. Pat the bat. Freddie Sanchez was a pretty decent second baseman. <laughs> but, uh, now, if you take a look at the mock ballot that I put together, obviously I don't have a vote, but I think I'm in agreement with you guys. I don't. I put the steroid questions aside, and I just say, who were the better players of that era? So I would have voted for Bond, Clemens. I would have voted for Jorge Posada and Jason Veritek. Jason Veritek, you know, I know you can vote up to 10 guys. I don't have a problem voting for a guy I know is not going to get in. I think Jason Veritek got four votes. Call of a catcher. Call a great game. I used to think that was nonsense until the Red Sox pitching staff would go to hell in a handbasket when he would miss a couple of weeks. So I believe that. Trevor Hoffman would have gotten my vote. He was just a couple of votes short. I think he was five votes short. He'll get in soon. Um, I would have voted for Rodriguez. I would have voted for Sosa. The guy had 360 home run seasons. And, yeah, I would have voted for Schilling, too. And one more thing I want to say about Schilling. There was a baseball argument against putting Kirk Schilling in the Hall of Fame. You know, I've heard people say he threw away the first half of his career. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. There was an argument to make it for Schilling. I just, I hate it when they bring in the character clause because it waters down the argument against them. And it credibility as a voter, in my opinion. Yeah, well, he's another guy who's got kind of uh, borderline, should be, maybe not, in the Hall of Fame. But when you add in the postseason, I think you have to have him in. So Agree, 100%. That's why he would, that's why he would get my vote. Ultimately, 216 wins. You know, he never won a Cy Young, and a lot of times he wasn't even the best pitcher on his own team. But that's not his fault. That's a product of the era. I think that postseason record speaks for itself. And I think the best big-game player of your era or big-game pitcher – I think that's one way of getting in. That's why I think David Ortiz gets in, too. Not necessarily just the 500 home runs, but the man was a beast when the pressure was on. I know Billy B and these favorite patricians don't believe in clutch play, but you got there, I hate to say. Yeah, but, I mean, even with guys like Schilling, people say, oh, he didn't win, you know, seven Cy Youngs. Well, yeah, well, how many years did he finish second to Randy Johnson? It's not his fault. He was behind. And you don't vote for the guy that said the Cy Youngs either. So what's your point, man? (laughs) Yeah. So baseball voters, I don't mean to speak ill of the whole ballot or all 442 voters, but you're right. You know, they're a tough game to crack. I think one of the things that the quote unquote steroid guys have going for them is like, you know, in the next few years it's gonna be a lot more of the younger writers coming up and a lot more of the older guys kind of going out. So all the guys saying, oh, no, it's not how you play baseball, character clause, I suspect him. They're going to be on the way out. Whereas you get younger writers who were like, they were all doing it. Who gives a shit? Vote him in. He had 800 home runs. Steroids well, and the other thing I like, <laughs> this Kirk Schilling saga, you know, it's sad. You know, the guy was a great player. And the eight years in baseball has not been great for him personally. He's got a lot of stuff going on, some of it of his own doing. But I think those younger voters might look at him in the next couple of years and, you know, 
he doesn't have that many years left on the belt. I mean, he's got five years left. But hopefully in the next five years, you get enough guys with ballots in their hands and say, you know what? Shut up on Twitter. Your Twitter handle, your tweets, that is not going to go into my Hall of Fame decision. I'm going to leave Twitter out of this because I think the younger guys will realize that, yeah, Twitter can be a cesspool. There's, uh, there's plenty of guys I know that have a few too many pops and then go on Twitter, so I wouldn't hold it against them. But, you know, Schilling, I think you should be in the Hall of Fame. If you want to come on the podcast, you, you can, you're welcome anytime. But let's Schilling should also get himself a throwaway handle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he should get an egg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Schilling needs an egg account. But let's get into the next <laughs> one. We're going to talk about uh, the quest to visit all 30 Major League ballparks. I know there's some that are complete total dumps. There are some that... I don't know if they count or not that I've been to that are now, you know, non-existent. Like, I know me and Rick went to Montreal years ago. I don't know if that counts or not. That totally counts. Yeah, right? 100%. It doesn't count for the 30, but it's like a, it's an added bonus because if you do all 30... It's a plus one. Yeah, it's a plus one. So you're at 31. You can't... Yeah. If anyone, you it's know... It's hard to beat. Yeah, you can't beat it. So... I mean, how many have you been to? I know you've been to... It's like the old baseball games on PlayStation 2. If you toggled with it, you could play... At Crosley Field or the Vet in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been to ten. Ten. Well, ten teams. Give me both, brother. So I've been to ten teams. I've I've seen the Mets uh, at their previous arena. I oh, never nice. went to the old Yankee Stadium. Um, but no, I've seen. So I've seen the Red Sox. I've seen the Mets, Yankees, Phillies, Pirates, Pirates, Rockies. Twins, Brewers, uh, Padres, and Dodgers. So those are the ten I've been to. Yeah, I've been to a few. I, I think one of the ones that I'm most proud of is the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Oh my God, yes. I know we uh, we all went to Chicago for you know weekend of uh, you know having a few drinks, and then we said, oh well, you know my geography's terrible, but apparently Milwaukee's only an hour away, so fuck it, let's just let's drive there. Yeah, we, we picked the one weekend to go to Chicago that the Cubs were not in town, <laughs> and then as a group we collectively decided, to, like, oh the White Sox are playing, nah, nah, I, let's I drive not, to Milwaukee. I do not need to go to the South Side of Chicago. I don't want to go to the South Side. Let's go to Wisconsin. Yeah, I do not know to go to the South Side. I'll go to Wisconsin, get a cheese hat and 17 margaritas at the baseball game. I still have my souvenir from the, what was it, six hours we were in Wisconsin. (laughs) My uh, drink Wisconsin blue shirt. (laughs) No, but I remember we were there and, uh, you know, it was like $10 tickets. And, you know, we're walking around and, you know, usually it's like $15 beers at Fenway. And they're, they're pretty cheap in Milwaukee. But then they also had the strongest margarita I've ever had in my entire life. I sat down. And you had one. You're like, oh, I got a margarita. And all of a sudden, you're like Cameron from Ferris Bueller just staring into space. <laughs> it was catatonic from too much Milwaukee tequila. We were in Chicago for a bachelor party weekend. And... The Sunday that we went to the uh, Brewers game was the most banged up I was the entire trip. I had way too much because they were playing the Nationals, and we were. I remember us yelling at Bryce Harper. <laughs> I was yelling at the mascot. It just really went to went to shit real quick. Yeah, it's not really a lot. You're like David that Wells that day, sweating your booze out at the ballpark in the sun. And it was a. It wasn't like Greg Von Bobblehead Day. I still have my Greg Von Bobblehead. That's on my desk right now. That's on my desk too. I don't know who Greg Von is, but I still have his bobblehead. Oh boy! But yeah, I mean, realistically, all thirty is kind of a stretch unless you're, you know, a sports writer or foul ball guy. Foul ball, oh yeah, foul ball guy. But it, you know, it's a pipe dream of mine. I'm this year. Well, you know what? It's tough because there are certain cities out there. Denver. I want to go to Denver. San Diego, love San Diego. Detroit, <laughs> eh, maybe we'll see. Yeah, I mean Chicago. You know, we're going back this summer. We're gonna go to a Cubs game. I still don't want to go to the South Side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the White Sox might be the. I'm just maybe just in the back of my mind. I'm hoping the White Sox move to a nicer <laughs> city by the time I get around to it. The White Sox are gonna move to the the seaport in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> the Boston White Sox. <laughs> Yeah, now, Kyle, you rattled off a lot of ballparks. Which one is your number one? My favorite ballpark by far is Pittsburgh. Uh, it was PNG? PNC. 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 Unbelievable. Well, you know what's great? You know what's great about that park or the time you guys went to visit it? I know you guys went the weekend of a Frozen Four, and that's how I 
was out to see Camden Yards in 2009 when I went to the Frozen Four in D.C. And this year, believe it or not, Frozen Four is in Chicago, and the Cubs are out of town. Of course. Well, you could go to the South Side and see the White Sox. <laughs> Oh, man. But you could see the White Sox. I don't know if anyone will be driving up to Milwaukee in between. We'll see. I, myself, have been to 11 ballparks, including three domes. I've been to Upstate Olympic and the old Metrodome. But for the current ballparks that I've been to, i got to give the nod to Fenway. And I hate to say that because the first 22 years of my life, that was the only ballpark I'd ever been to. And going to Fenway in the 90s, they would put a new coat of paint on every year, but that was about it. And so I was never a huge Fenway guy growing up. I was always rooting for new Fenway. But they've done so many nice things there. And the more I've gone to see other ballparks, you appreciate that Fenway, there's no nonsense. They play the organ. There's a little, but the focus is on the baseball, not on the sausage race or junk like that. <laughs> what, was the, what was the race in uh, Milwaukee? Yeah, it was like a bunch. It was like a sausage and a brat. It was the brat race. Oh, no, it was the uh, pierogies. Was it pierogies? No, it was a bunch of stupid meats. <laughs> yeah, it was another, you know, collection of meats running around the fucking field. A bowl of sausage. Well, no, you know what, though? It must be a guy thing trying to get to all these ballparks, because Billy Joel is 67, and he's doing the same thing now. Yeah. yeah. I saw Billy Joel uh, last play at Shea. I saw him at Fenway. Yeah, I saw him at Fenway. I've actually seen... I feel He's like going to be at Ricky this summer. He's going to be at Target Field. I, no, he, he's going to try to hit all 30. Billy Joel might beat us. He's got a new young family to support. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he doesn't get a DUI and crash into, like, the Long Island Sound before that. Yeah, yeah I mean, he is a Long you know Island what? celebrity. I respect Billy Joel. He says, you know what, as long as there's demand, I'll play. Yeah, you can call it dad rock, but at least the guy is... When he was in Minneapolis a couple of years ago, I saw him and he goes, same old shit. But there's a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, what you call trying to support the young family, I call Billy Joel trying to get away from his family. Oh, honey, I got to play MSG again tonight. What the hell, Billy? Once a month for the rest of his life was his, oh no, or once a month till he doesn't sell it out anymore. And he sold it out every single time. Like, you're going to play, oh, whatever. Yeah. Billy Joel. <laughs> but I know uh, you were talking about Frozen 4, Rick, so we're going to, Transition into hockey. I know our two favorite teams have shit the bed. Uh, I know the Islanders have their own little dumpster fire going on. Oh, it's a, it's a very special dumpster fire. Well, we... Uh, so, after six years, and specifically after a dominant 4 nothing win in Boston against the Bruins, we yep. fired our coach. Because yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense after, you know, the... Awful, awful performances that they've been having all year. Let's fire him after the win. Should have sure. won by six. Sure, yeah, like that's exactly my thought process. Like, don't get me wrong, I've always been for at least the past couple of years, he's not the guy. He wasn't the guy, he'll never be the guy. He needed to go. I mean he's got great lettuce though. He does have great lettuce. He looks Put like he looks like a guy who just came out of an AA meeting and he's like drinking fucking mouthwash on the side of the bench. He looks like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> if you put if you put the fucking like that orange like dress pretty much that Fred wears <laughs> with the stupid tie, that's him. I'm telling you, he's got that boozy alcoholic puff face. He looks like he's just raring to go. Well, it's funny because as soon as we get so for the past, so he's been the coach since 2010, I believe. And every single year, it's just the same bullshit. They've been just collapsing in the third period all the time. It's just, it's like if they have a, if they're winning two to one in a game and it's going into the third period, immediately I'm just like, all right, I know how this is going to end. They're going to give up a goal with like six minutes left, and then they're going to give up the, you know, the game winning goal with like 30 seconds left. And I'm just going to be fucking pissed off as I am all the time watching this garbage team. And, they fire him first game. They're playing the Dallas Stars uh, the other night, and third period comes around. I'm like, here we go. Different coach. Oh, it's the assistant coach now. Doug Waits our coach now. Third period rolls around. Dominant third period. So I'm like, how? <laughs> Six years of the same bullshit, and then you get you know the assistant coach comes in. Like, what did you change that that was dramatic that we're you had that good of a showing. It wasn't even like they had an acceptable third period. They looked good, which was not anything I'm accustomed to seeing for the past six years. And then they won again 
Last night. Oh, no. So, no, that, that was the last game. They played two in a row. They won two in a row. I'm going back to last uh, last Bruins game when they won that. But <coughs> yeah. they're playing tonight, and they're winning tonight. So I'm hoping from the same thing from, from the Bruins. You know, we were talking about how both of our teams are terrible. I know the Islanders are in last place. The Bruins are, I think, right around the eighth seed, but they also have played the most games in the NHL, so that's going to end real quick. Well, that's but like, you, you're talking about uh, what? Uh, Ottawa and um, who the, t- the two teams right behind them. They're in second place in the Atlantic Division, but they have like six games yeah. So once, for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so once that evens out as far as how many games played, the Bruins are going to be like six points out probably. Yeah. But no, because I remember we were talking, and you know, you're telling me how, how awful the Islanders have been. They've just been a total shit bomb of a team. And they come in and they blow the Bruins off for nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, that's how it goes. It's like it's the same thing like when the Islanders play the Rangers. It's like we could be, you know, shit in the bed. The Rangers are the Rangers have been a pretty consistently good team for the you know past decade, but they can never just get over that hump of you know winning an actual cup. But hold on, I gotta deviate a little. I, I got a little uh, fucking grievance there. <laughs> air it out. I got I got I gotta air something. So. Growing up, being a supporter of the, as someone would call the B-list New York teams, so the Mets, the Islanders, um, the Nets, and then for football, I guess I'm like the C-list for the fucking Bills. (laughs) So pretty much, if long story short, I've never seen one title in my entire life. Where, you know, Mr. Championship over here has, like, <laughs> fucking nine past titles. I got a lot of t-shirts and hats. A lot of t-shirts. I got, I think I have two hey, t-shirts. Those t-shirts and hats get expensive, man. It is a burden. Don't <laughs> kid yourself. Oh, go, oh, go fuck yourself. I, I have, I have. I brought you to those parades. We got drunk. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, don't get me wrong. I do like, I do enjoy the Red Sox, as we previously discussed, just out of the hatred for the Yankees. But. As far as the comparison goes, this is where I gotta air, air air a little grievance. If you're a Yankees fan, 27 titles, and you want to shit on the Mets, fine. 27 titles to two. Don't get me wrong, you've been around for 40 years longer, and you won like half of them when there was like six teams in the fucking league. I'll ignore that for now. You want to come around to the Knicks and Nets? That's just a dumpster. For, they both fucking suck, so I don't want to hear any shit from that. Um... The Bills, four Super Bowls in a row, lost every single one. If you're a Giants fan, fine, you can give me shit. If you're a Jets fan, you know, they never give anybody shit. Unless when they, you know, they beat the Pats in the divisional round. I mean, they, that's their Super Bowl every when they, year. they chant those four letters and you get that shit bum of a firefighter up there. Oh, yeah, there. that guy that doesn't have a job. <laughs> he's, the, he's the worst firefighter in all of New York, and we fucking killed him at the butt fumble. <laughs> we were at butt fumble, by the way. Yeah, I, I take pr- great pride in that. He was doing his old stupid chant, and then they got smoked by about 50 points, and I never saw him again. <laughs> He's gone. He retired. <laughs> Didn't he retire from that position? Yeah. Yeah. Shame. Because of that game, yeah, right? Yeah, after that game, he was like, I'm done. I'm done. Because I remember just every single time I'd, I'd see him, I'm like, what, are they no fires on Sunday? What the hell is he doing all the fucking time? It's the worst fire. Well, you fire talk about dumpster fires. You got a guy in your locker room that's quarterback in the jaw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine someone taking a swing at Tom Brady? No. That, that would never even fucking happen. First of all, he's too pretty. He's too pretty. His, your hand would break on his jaw. His clean cut iron jaw. Your hand would just smash into a billion pieces. No one even took, would take a swing at Sanchez. That fucking. <laughs> when, remember when that Sanchez, like, I think it was after a butt fumble, when, you know, he was, knew he was on his way out of New York, where he started getting, like, started braiding his hair and just, like, really went off the deep end. He was yeah. wearing sweatpants everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he had, like, the soccer little beret. <laughs> yeah, 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 the man bun, right? Yeah, no, because I remember that game, because the Jets were down about 40 points, and they still wouldn't put Debo in. They're like, no, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, back to my actual point. So, to give you all the scenarios as far as the teams. The one thing that pisses me off out of them, anything in like the sports that I, you know, follow, is when Ranger fans give me shit for being an Islander fan. Like, ah, oh, typical Islanders, typical dumpster fire. I'm sorry, we won four Stanley Cups. How many Stanley Cups do the Rangers have? Oh yeah, that's right, fucking four. <laughs> we made five in a row in 80, 81, 82, 83, and we made it in 84 and lost. In game, I think it was a like game seven or something like that, to Wayne Gretzky and the start, the birth of the Oilers run with him, Messier, 
uh, uh, what was the goalie's name? Fjord, and just all that. Pretty good. And, and I get, I get shit. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The fucking Islanders suck for the past twenty years. I'm like, you've won one Stanley <laughs> Cup since 1940. Go fuck yourselves. Nothing boils my balls more than the goddamn Rangers fans talking shit all day long as if they're this dominant franchise. I'm like, no. If anything, we suck the same. Fuck you. Yo, this is New York, son. And the Islanders are the last professional sporting team in North America to win four consecutive titles. Yes. And it's kind of funny, too, because you look back at like what kind of a streak that was. I'm not even sure any pro hockey team has ever made five. In our, I mean, don't get me wrong, we didn't win the last one, but has any hockey team ever won, uh, well, appeared in five in a row? Yeah, the only team I Probably really... not since 1967, but back during the days of the original six, it was probably the same two teams every year. Yeah, I mean, well, right before the Islanders went on their run, the Canadians won four in a row. 76 to 80 was the Canadians, or 77 to 80, whatever it was, and never again. Yeah, never again. That will never happen again. <laughs> and the only thing I can think of comparable are like you know the the uh, Celtics back in like the fifties and the sixties. Then they win like ten now, or eleven. What have we got to do when people are giving you a hard time about oh what has your team done lately? For every sport, we need to figure out when it really started because half those Yankee championships come when they were still using one baseball game. You know, I don't know if the nineteen twenties World Series championship should still count. You know, the Celtics. Don't get me wrong, love the Celtics. You know, when did those come, really? Was the league at that point what it is now? We need to figure out in each league when we're going to start counting. Maybe for hockey, it's 1967 when the 12 teams. We, you know, Yankees fans, you've won one this century. Yeah, and that's why I love the Patriots that much more. Well, how many of you won? Four? Yeah, in the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> We've been to... Uh, what is this? Is this uh, Brady's 10th or 11th AFC Championship game? I think it's... It's, it's 11. That, that's the uh, mind-blowing well, stat. Well, you know, 11th of the combo of the two of them. I think it's Belichick's at like 12th. Yeah, because Belichick's been like, you know, assistant coaches and stuff like yeah. that. But, uh, and plus any Bledsoe years. But Brady, this is, I think it's his 11th in 15 years as a starter. I don't know if that includes the 08 year when he blew his knee out and he, you know, obviously didn't play. But that's... Freaking insane. So it's like 90% of the time he's playing football, he's in the AFC Championship game. That's insane. As a, you know, as a Bills fan, just I used to hate him. I really did. I thought he was a douche. I thought Belichick was an asshole. They're just the typical, you know, not being from the market. You're looking at a team. At this point, I'm just like, you know what? Our team sucks. We're like already in rebuild mode. I'm like, just... Go out with a bang. Who gives a shit? Just win them and then never win another one again. That's fine. When you, uh, It's just impressive at this point. Because it's like, no matter what you do, you can't beat them. They they look... It's like when... I, I was explaining to you the other day, right? It's like, when you watch them, it almost looks as like they're not doing anything special and then everyone just else just sucks at football. It's not. It doesn't look like they're doing anything special. It just looks like they're playing the game the way the game should be played. And you have all these teams that just cannot figure out how to play football. Yeah, and it's funny because you know the number one thing that Belichick always talks about that he does specifically that seems like very kind of you know common knowledge, something that everyone should do, but they don't. Is you know the Patriots are a game plan specific team. You can't say oh the Patriots all they do is throw deep or all they do is run the ball or all they do is this or that. That's not what they do. They figure out what you do best, they take that away, and then they attack you other ways. And, you know, you see other teams all the time. It's like, oh, no, we're a hard-nosed running team. We're going to run it down your throat. And then they get stuffed, and they don't know what the fuck to do. But the Patriots, they kind of game plan around what you're good at, what your weakness is, and they attack that. So it's not specifically one thing or the other. So I feel like that's one thing that you know separates them. Obviously, you have Belichick and Brady, so that's a huge thing. But... Yeah, that's not really a knock. People say, oh, you got Belichick and Brady. That's why you're good. Yeah, no shit. That's why Rex Grossman has no Super Bowls. It's not a surprise. Yeah. But that's why I'm kind of... Well, that's what's nice about Belichick, too, is that you know going into a game, if you're a Patriots fan, your team is not going to lose because of a coaching blunder. You're not going to call some bogus timeout to ice a kicker, which I hate. You're not going to call some stupid timeout. You're not going to waste timeouts. You know if you lose... You got beat. You didn't beat yourself. Yeah, I mean, Andy Reid's calling timeouts and, you know, milking the clock practice. He's got to go take a dump because he ate too much bacon. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Tuca. <laughs> yeah, oh, Tuca yeah. got pulled in the third? Where is he? Too many wings. Ah, oh, I was having the hot wings yesterday, even though I'm sick, because I'm a fucking asshole. How many times does Tuca get pulled in a year for diarrhea? It's got to be at <laughs> least four. Well, it's funny when they talk about the rear, they just plug it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. He's just had adult diaper and goal. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Bruins are fucked, so I don't want to talk about that anymore. They, uh, I know Claude's on official job watch because he, I mean, I don't think he's the worst coach. I just think he was a really good coach for a, you know, really tough, big, bad Bruins team where it was heavy skaters, hard hitting. That's what, that's, just, that's what his thing was. And the team and the league's kind of moved away. It's been a little bit more of speedy play, small guys, skilled players. So, you know, that, that's fine. The Bruins just got to figure out what they want to do. But the point is, whatever he's doing is not working. I mean, they had that four nothing loss to to the Islanders. Then they had a, they were up four one in Detroit, and they blew that lead. They got up again. They were up with three goals. They blew three two three goal leads, and then they lost in uh, either overtime or a shootout. And then uh, last night, they were playing the Blackhawks, and I'm watching the game. They're like they this is the thing with them. They play up and down to the competition. So you know the Islanders, they got smoked. They play you know, the Blackhawks, who are one of the best teams every year, and they're with them the entire game for 58 minutes, and then they get up a goal with like a minute 30 to go, and it's just like, are you fucking kidding me? So I don't know. They're they're done. They're and playing up or down to the level of your competition is a bad sign. That is a sign that your coach is not getting you up for the game. And you know, I got a little sympathy for Claude. He's the second longest tenured coach in Boston after Bill. He really settled the franchise down in 2007 because, you know, you think the Bruins look bad now. Think back to where they were 10 years ago. They were just running through coaches left and right, you know, in the late spending years. So, you know, Claude has done a good job, but it seems to me that he kind of lost his touch. And like I just said, if you're playing up or down to the competition every night, that just seems like a lot, you know, lost a little bit. And... I don't know how close the team is. Maybe a new coach like the fire under their ass, but he's skating on thin ice. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's a, I don't think he's a bad coach. I think the roster is super flawed, anyways. Uh, you know, I think Neely and now Sweeney and obviously um, uh, Shirelli, I think, kind of shit the bed with the team and kind of put them in a bad position. Obviously, trading away guys like Sagan kind of screwed them. But even like the last couple of years. They they're in the same position they are now. They're like, oh, we're the eight seed. If we make a, a trade, we'll we'll get in. We'll you know we'll make the playoffs. We can make a run. And they trade draft picks and you know young young prospects. And they trade it for shitheads like John Michael Lyles. And then they still don't make the playoffs. So that's the one thing I hope they don't. I hope hope they don't do. I hope they don't trade away someone like Carlo, who's looked like a you know a nice young player, just to try and get some asshole to try and get the eight seed and get blown out anyways. Like you need to either you know have a complete overhaul. We need to rebuild. They get a lot of young prospects that you know look strong. Don't fucking give them away just to get the eight seed and get your doors blown off. We got guys like McAvoy from BU, who Rick, I know you probably know all about, uh, coming up. So let's let's not blow away the farm system to get our, our fucking doors blown off in round one. Do you want a new coach? I mean, though, I feel like the argument always is like, oh, I should fire Claude. So I'm not the guy saying fire Claude. Because people say, who's gonna be the coach? I'm like, I don't know. I don't give a shit. I don't think he's a terrible coach. I just think they need to decide, are we going to be the big bad Bruins like we always were, or are we going to go to smaller, more skilled players like Krug and Pasternak and stuff like that? Because if they are, Claude's not the coach for that. If they want to be the big bad Bruins, I think Claude's a good guy. But I still think it's also, you know, he's been the coach for so long, I think it might just be a time for a change of scenery. Yeah, well, Jack Capuano is available. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I, I do I do like having a coach with lettuce. Claude being bald, it's uh. It might be a, yeah, might be a welcome change to the garden. I know. I mean, if he grows a mustache, he could be he could be a real character in Boston. Oh God! But yeah. but yeah. So, anyways, we talked a lot about hockey. Uh, something that you know does not have a lot of hockey ever is ESPN. And I know uh, you you've been having you know your blood boiling lately with the ESPN app. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> so yeah, well you know hockey is. I've always been a big hockey and baseball guy. Those are my two sports, the two sports I grew up with, the two sports I played growing up. So, you know, watching ESPN and you never get a glimpse of hockey, maybe you you know, maybe you'll get some like breakaway on their top 10, but that's the extent of the ESPN coverage of hockey. They don't ever since the lockout and then uh, the NHL kind of fisted them with the whole TV rights deal. They're like, "Oh, we're not going to showcase anything for you." <laughs> 
So you don't get a lot of hockey on ESPN. But if anybody out there, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Um, and as I'm fucking talking about this, <laughs> like holy shit. So I don't know if you have the ESPN app on your phone. It's a very convenient app to have. You know, you get all the scores, you get all the you know the schedules, standings. I don't know about you guys, but every five fucking minutes, I get a thing from ESPN just telling me, like, some bullshit stat. Because back in the day, it used to be, you know, so-and-so game has started. All right, we're at halftime for this football game. All right, here's the final score. Something, you know, check out this amazing play. Now, even with it tailored down, because you can edit it to... You know specific teams you want to. You know it's like you know it asks you pretty much in your settings like what what teams do you follow? We'll give you you know the info on this. So you know I have it set to follow the Nets, the Islanders, and the Bills. Don't even care about the Nets; they're garbage. All your all the draft picks are going to the Celtics anyway. Uh, we'll check in again with them in five years. Good. Yeah. So I don't know about anybody else. I get a fucking notification about NBA, just bullshit like. Check out this crazy dunk Westbrook just made. Well, You'll never believe it. <laughs> What's the number one thing they show all goddamn day besides Sports Center? Yeah, basketball. Uh, like it's unbelievable, and it's not even like I have basketball selected. It, it, you know, it's not like okay, like I follow the Nets, so they're you know giving me Nets related information. It's like check out like what Draymond Green did. <laughs> Holy shit! Kicked You'll never in. believe it. Kicked fuck- another guy in the balls. It's, yeah, it's clickbait for fucking an app. So I get this shit all day long. So I'm at the point now where I'm like, do I just delete the app? I'm like, I'll get my sports info from Twitter or something. I cannot mentally take one more update from ESPN about some bullshit dunk. Holy shit, you got to see the way this guy dunks. Well, like, oh, wow. That's you kidding me. That's something that, that's driving me nuts lately is the fucking commentary from the ESPN app update guy. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like... Uh, you need to see this absolutely filthy block from Draymond Green. And I, I watch it. And I'm like, that's okay. Oh, look at this absolutely disgusting three-pointer from Steph Curry. Shut the fuck up. Just tell me he scored 30 points. That's yeah. all I need to know. It's I don't need your shitty commentary from Bristol. It's clickbait in an app form. So this is just <laughs> pushing me notifications. Like, I know you're on fucking NBA's payroll, but holy shit, calm down. They're, I don't care. They're also really fucking bad with, again, you know, things they don't show. Like hockey, uh, like I, I took a screenshot and I, I tweeted out on the 300s account the other day. It was I was watching the the game. I was watching the, the Bruins game, and it was like you know they were down like two nothing in the second period. And I get the fucking ESPN app notification: puck is dropped for Bruins game. I'm like, no, puck dropped 90 minutes ago. You fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. Or or I, it used to affect me a lot more because I used to uh, have the NHL like center ice package or whatever. So when I would watch Islander games. You know, they leech off the DirecTV uh, feed, which is, you know, five minutes fucking behind what it actually is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm watching the, you know, I'm watching the game and it's like, oh yeah, you know, there's five minutes left in the first. And then my phone, you know, buzzes. It's like, goal scored by, you know, um, John Tavares or something like that. And it's like, Islanders lead, one nothing. I'm like, that didn't fucking happen yet on my feed. And then all of a sudden, here we go. It's like, so I know everything that happens before it happens. So that's another reason, if, you know, if you're watching any kind of a game on delay, delete. Or, and then what you were saying, it's like, it's selective when they send it. So it's like, John Tavares will score, I'll get that before I actually get to see it on the tape delay. Or, you know, I'll get game, game started two hours after the game started. Yeah, and Rick, I, I know you were a, uh, a dumb phone guy for a long time. Do you have ESPN app now, or are you, are you still living in the Stone Age? Just upgraded to the... And I do not have the ESPN app. I don't even have a ringtone. I haven't had a ringtone since 2006, I don't think. You know, I don't think me, that's all I need. And, you know, you're talking about ESPN. They don't show anything but dunk and whatnot. They are the worldwide leader in football and basketball. And that's why they're bleeding subscribers. Yeah, I mean, it's not in a ringtone. I don't think I've had my phone on volume in fucking eight years. I don't even have vibrate on my phone. If I catch you, I catch you. If I don't, I'll get back to you. I used to have, like, fucking TI polyphonic ringtones. Now it's just on vibrate. I My phone uh, rang recently. I had it on for some reason. And my girlfriend's like, what the fuck was that? I'm like, 
Oh, that's the sound my phone makes. She's like, I've never heard that. <laughs> well, it's like the ring. Remember the ring back tones? Oh. Please wait while your party's reached. It's like Beethoven. If you still have, <laughs> if, you, if you still have a ring back tone, you are a poor person. I have the ringtone turned off because whenever it has it on and they're texting, ping, 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 I feel like the Russian in the limousine with the lane. I'm ready to throw it out the window. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so I, I think we've covered a lot today. Uh, I know we talked all about basketball, the shitty uh, prospects of the Islanders and the Bruins. Hopefully, Coach Claude gets fired soon. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's been a good episode. I don't know if you guys want to add anything, Kyle. So, next week, we have the well we got the Super Bowl coming up so probably on the next podcast let's uh probably gonna give our picks we'll do a little bit of a Super Bowl breakdown hopefully the fucking Patriots don't eat shit tomorrow <laughs> yeah you know but <laughs> that's the great thing about me in football it's like it's a September to a December commitment never have to worry <laughs> yeah you're an objective fan yeah so next week's episode will be a big uh, Super Bowl preview we'll talk a lot about that maybe the uh, Pro Bowl in Orlando that sounds like a sexy event Ooh, and maybe maybe some Vegas hockey, mm-hmm. Vegas football too. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks guys for listening to episode two of the Three Hundreds podcast. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.